it's one of the most embarrassing questions you can ask an architect is, um, is what, what, what's your favorite building? Architects are very, very well educated when it comes to criticizing other buildings. Uh, and one gets embarrassed and flustered when trying to come up with buildings that one loves. And when asked what's a favorite in Cape Town, it's very difficult because Cape Town Cape Town's a city of mountains and sea, and the kinds of things that embarrass intellectuals to talk about. Um, I think Rudyard Kipling was in Cape Town for a month. It, it occupied a page in his diary. It was very, very, di it, it's difficult to write about beauty and sun and sea. Uh, it's not an intellectual city, and it's not a city of high art. And there are very few buildings that one can talk about on that level. Um, a handful, perhaps, and you think of the work of Rulof Eiten Burchardt, of Norbert Rosendahl and the Santoses, and one's run out of names to mention. Is what, what, what are great buildings in Cape Town? There's maybe a building stock of about 20, 30 properties in a city of three and a half million people that one can refer to as great places to live. And a good five of them come from the Santoses. Uh, and it's their entire body of work. They were in Cape Town for a very short period working from 1969 to 1972 in which they churned out these four properties that would change Cape Town forever. Uh, it would be a much more embarrassing question to be asked without the Santoses. Okay, at, at, House, at House Steckhoven, I mean, it, it, it's a nostalgia, it's, an, it's a perverse nostalgia uh, about the way that upper middle class people used to live in South Africa. Um, it's not like that anymore. This is how our parents' generation used to live, this kind of land, um, the luxury of this kind of architecture, whereas our generation are cramped into flats and we consider ourselves lucky and to be doing very well to own our own apartments. Uh, so there's a kind of a nostalgia for a time that I certainly barely knew. Uh, so what resonates more strongly with me are properties like um, Damien Court's in Scotts Road uh, and the kinds of work that we do at our office, which is more apartments and high density developments, less than the suburban estate is the urban apartment block and Iona and um, and Damien Court resonate particularly strongly with me about this sort of tortured interplay of, of spaces. A few years ago, I was desperate to get my father to buy one of the upstairs flats at Damien Court. My father's a bit overweight. I couldn't get him in the lift. None of us were even allowed in the lift because of our, our numbers. But I, I, I could just squeeze him in the lift. I couldn't get him to rotate. So, so that he could press the button in the lift. So that, that never happened because um, the Santoses hark back to an era of architectural idealism that's been forgotten. Today, a new apartment is a shed designed for optimal flexibility. It's a rectangle with some melamine kitchen units and some melamine cupboards. It's rational and it's adaptable. Uh, the kind of idealism, you've got to understand the confidence and the idealism that went into... Um, Adele and Tony's approach uh, to design that staircase that there's only one way to walk up that staircase. You can't walk a little bit to this side, little bit, you've got to curve around with it, your spine's got to curl with that stair. Uh, it informs the whole way that your body moves through that space and they defined only one way through and that was the beautiful way.